Welcome to this Arnold Colourford Knitwear tutorial on blocking lace. This tutorial accompanies MDK Field Guide number 15 open and I'm using the rib lace scarf by Jeanette Sloan to demonstrate the process of blocking. So when you finish knitting a piece of lace it tends to come off the needles like this, fairly scrunched up and the lace pattern that you've spent all that time knitting with these lovely eyelets isn't terribly visible. When you block something you soak it in water, maybe with a little bit of wool wash, and then you stretch it out in the arrangement that you want it in and you leave it to dry. So it's a little bit like the process of blow drying your hair in that you show it how you'd like it to be and then you let it dry in that position. I'm going to show you how to do blocking with a small amount of equipment. Now I'm here in the studio and so I'm using these foam boards to pin into but if you're at home then all you need is a towel and you can put that towel over either a carpeted area or a bed or some other soft furnishing, anything that you can put pins into. Once you've soaked your item, you're then going to stretch it out as I showed you and you want something that will hold the item stretched out so that you can see the shape clearly. I'm going to use pins, but I'm not only going to use pins. If you pin out the straight edge, then you're going to end up with a sort of scalloped edge where the pins are, either that or you're going to have to use a lot of pins to make it be straight. So my top tip is to use some strong cotton yarn or acrylic, something that isn't going to break if you pull it nice and tight. And we're going to thread that along the straight edges and then we're going to pin that out tight and that will keep the edges of your knitted piece nice and straight without, without those annoying scallops. I've threaded my strong cotton onto a blunt tapestry needle and I'm now going to sew it all the way up the very edge of the scarf. Now this scarf has a couple of garter stitches at the edge which is very common um, and so I'm going to take the uh, cotton up through the stitches at the edge of the scarf. And I'm just going to sew it all the way along the very edge. I've threaded the strong cotton down the edge of both sides of my scarf and I've left a fair bit of slack at the end of each of those threads. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put the scarf into a bowl with some just hand cool water and just a drop of uh, wool wash to make sure that the water really penetrates into the fibres and I'm going to leave it there to soak for 20 minutes or so and then I'll bring it back and show you how to pin it out. So our scarf with the cotton threaded down the sides has now been soaked for 20 minutes or so and all of the excess water has been squeezed out. I usually do that by placing the scarf between two towels and then rolling it up or folding it and almost treading on it to squeeze as much water out as possible. It just speeds up the process. I've then tied a loop at the end of each of the two um, cotton threads that went down the side of the scarf and I've pinned out the ends and then I've put pins in the corners of the scarf here. What I've then done is I've used a ruler to come along here and I've put a pin in every 15 centimetres or so along the edge of both sides. That's six inches if you're in Imperial. So I've just put a pin in and the pin goes just inside the cotton thread. So the cotton thread and the um, scarf are being pinned out and it's stretched out so that you can see all the nice eyelets in your lace patterning. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to work along and I'm going to keep pinning it out at 15 centimetre intervals. And you'll see that at the moment we have got a little bit of scalloping going on here, but what we'll do once it's all pinned out is we'll tighten up the cotton threads and that will then keep everything almost entirely straight. 
I've gone all the way along the edge of the um, scarf and I've put in pins every 15 centimeters or six inches or so. Here are the last couple. So I'm pinning that one at the end there. And this one is pinned down too. And you'll see that whilst the edges of the shawl are fairly straight at the moment, it's just going to tighten them up nicely if I now pull carefully so that I don't ping the pins out, but I pull on the end of the cotton and I'm then going to put a second pin in quite close to the first one and I'm just going to use that to wrap around and make like a figure of eight at the base of the two pins and then a couple of times around that one for good luck and that's just going to hold it nice and secure and you can tie it on if you'd want to it's sometimes a little bit more tricky to do that with the soggy soggy cord but that will hold the edge nice and tight let's do the same at the top here so we put a second pin in fairly close to the first one we then pull and that brings the edge really nice and smart and then we're carefully doing figure of eight around those two pins give it a couple of wraps around the last one and that's going to hold our edges nice and tight so we've now got the straight edges sorted and all we need to do now is just put a few pins in at the end of the scarf just to keep that length along there and we'll repeat the same at the other end once you've pinned both ends you simply need to leave your scarf to dry and keep an eye on it as it's drying. You may need to tighten up your cotton threads as it dries because they may just loosen off a little bit. Once your scarf or shawl is completely dry, you simply need to unpin it. And once you've removed all the pins, you can then pull the cotton threads out and I'll show you how it looks in a second once I've done that. Once you've removed both of the cotton cords from each side, all that remains is to weave in your ends. We don't do that before blocking because if you've woven them in and trimmed them, once the um, fabric has been spread out, obviously those ends could easily pop through to the right side. So it's much better either to weave them in but not trim them until after you finish blocking or just weave them in when you've finished blocking. So I'm all set to do that now. And look how beautiful that scarf now is compared with the scrunched up mess that came off our needles. It really is a magical process, blocking is. And I hope that this video has shown you how to do it with very little in the way of special equipment. I do hope you found that tutorial on blocking lace helpful. You can sign up to subscribe to our YouTube channel with the circle in the bottom corner there and we've got a link up top here to visit our website to find out more about our techniques led books. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye bye.